Okay, as usual, we start with a free body diagram for this problem. And I've drawn on all the usual forces, the force of gravity acting vertically downwards. And if I have resolved that into two components, one acting down the slope and one perpendicular to the slope. And then there is, of course, the normal force, N, acting perpendicular to the slope as well. Notice that there is a frictional force acting up the slope. This is the force which prevents the ball from sliding down the slope. It also produces a torque on the ball, causing the ball to roll. You may want to go back and review the section entitled, What part does friction play in rolling here? Carrying on with the problem, we need to look at the equations of motion. And we have, first of all, to consider the translational equations of motion. So, in the x direction, the translational equation of motion is mg sine phi, that's the component of gravity acting down the slope, minus the frictional force acting up the slope. That is on the left-hand side of Newton's second law equation. And on the right-hand side, as usual, we have the mass times the acceleration of the center of mass. That's ACM subscript x to indicate that it's in the x direction. Now we want the equation of motion perpendicular to the slope. That is the normal reaction force N minus the component of gravity, which is mg cos phi. Again, putting that into Newton's second law equation equals the mass times the acceleration of the center of mass in the y direction, ACM. That's equation 2. That, of course, equals zero because there is no acceleration in, in the y direction. Now we need to consider the rotational equation of motion. Remember that Newton's second law for rotation is that the resultant external torque, tor x, is equal to the moment of inertia times the angular acceleration, alpha. The only force which produces a torque on the sphere is the frictional force, F subscript F, because all the other forces act through the center of motion, through the axis of rotation. So therefore, the torque produced by the frictional force is just equal to the magnitude of the frictional force times its distance from the axis of rotation, which is just the radius of the ball, R. So that gives us equation 3. Now we need the moment of inertia of the ball. So the moment of inertia for a sphere is equal to 2 fifths times the mass of the sphere times the radius squared. Now, since there is no slipping of the ball down the slope, we can say that the acceleration of the center of mass is equal to the radius of the ball times the angular acceleration alpha. Remember, that is the condition for no slipping. And we get that by just differentiating the equation that the velocity of the center of mass is equal to r omega. OK, so now let us substitute this last equation and the formula for the moment of inertia into equation 3. So we get that F friction times R is equal to 2 fifths MR squared times the acceleration of the center of mass in the X direction divided by R. We can now cancel the R's and we get that F friction is equal to 2 fifths M times the acceleration of the center of mass. Let's call that equation 4. We can now substitute into equation 1. So we get mg sine phi minus 2 fifths m a center of mass equals the mass times the acceleration of the center of mass in the x direction. Transposing that equation and simplifying, we can end up with the acceleration of the center of mass in the x direction is equal to 5 sevenths times the acceleration due to gravity g times sine phi. So that's the first part of the question answered.
We were also asked to determine what the frictional force was, F friction. So to do that, we just need to go back and substitute for the acceleration of the center of mass into equation 4. That becomes then the frictional force is equal to 2 sevenths mg sine phi. Because the ball does not slip at the instantaneous point of contact with the ground, the friction force is a static friction force. It prevents slipping and gives the ball its angular acceleration. To determine the minimum coefficient of static friction to prevent slipping, remember that the coefficient of static friction is equal to the friction force divided by the normal force N. From equation 2, we know that the normal force N is equal to mg cos phi. And therefore, the coefficient of static friction the minimum coefficient of static friction required is just 2 sevenths times tan phi. If the coefficient of static friction is less than this, slipping or sliding will occur. Equations 1, 2 and 3 are still valid, but the acceleration of the center of mass is no longer equal to r alpha and also the velocity of the center of mass is no longer equal to um, r times omega. So we only have two equations, one and three, with three unknowns. So to solve the problem of rolling with slipping requires taking kinetic friction into account.